I'm really excited to bring you another video today. I'm going to show you how to make my all-time favorite fall recipes. It's a recipe for homemade butternut squash ravioli. And I'm going to put it in a delicious browned sage butter with a really awesome sourdough breadcrumb. It's going to be amazing. So to start things off today, you're going to want to start off by roasting your butternut squash. Now, a lot of people are scared of chopping winter squashes and all that, but here's how I do it. So I just take it, the butternut squash, and I chop the top off, and then I chop it right down the center. You wanna have a really sharp knife, that's really important, and then you open it up and it reveals all those pretty seeds. And here's a little trick of mine. I actually use a pumpkin seed scooper that I got a couple years ago around Halloween, and it makes the easiest tips of removing the seeds. You see, it just all comes out just like that. It's so super simple. And then once you've got all the seeds removed, I just start peeling it with a vegetable peeler. Um, and I just, it's kind of a pain and I just go like this. But um, to save time, I've already chopped up our squash here and um, it's good to go. So I'm just gonna add some olive oil. I just like to drizzle it on. And a little bit of salt and just a little bit of pepper. And then I toss it together with my hands, or you can use a spatula or whatever you want. And then we just put it in the oven for about 30 to 40 minutes until the squash is really soft and um, roasted and caramelized and good to go. And then we're gonna puree it into a delicious creamy puree for our ravioli. Okay, so I'm gonna throw this in the oven. While the butternut squash is roasting, I like to make the pasta dough. It's such a simple thing to make. All you need is flour, eggs, and water. Don't be afraid of homemade pasta dough. I promise it's so easy. The thing is, I just realized I'm out of eggs, so let's go check the chicken coop and see what's going on out there. Okay, so now we're gonna start to make the pasta dough. It's really easy, like I said. You just add two and a half cups of all-purpose flour to the bowl of a mixer. This is actually a little bit wet, but that's okay because you can just add flour and kind of fix that. But it's really important once your dough is together and all made that you keep it covered at almost all times. Okay, so now that we've got our dough all prepped and ready to go, it's time to make the filling for the pasta. My butternut squash is done roasting, so I'm just gonna add it right to my food processor. And over here I have all my cheeses. This is a butternut squash cheese ravioli, so the cheese is really important. Um, I have some drunken goat cheese, which is like one of my all-time favorite cheeses right now. Just crumble it up kind of and break it into smaller pieces as you add it to the food processor. I also have a little bit of gorgonzola. Um, I know that some people are iffy about their blue cheeses. I personally love it, so I'm adding around two ounces of that. And you also need some Parmesan. You need about half a cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese and this may seem a little cheesy but I promise it's so delicious the more cheese the better if you ask me so you need about a half a cup of Parmesan you also need one egg Okay, so this looks perfect. It's all pureed and together in one. Now we're just gonna pop this off and we're kinda gonna set it aside for just a few minutes here. We're gonna get rid of the food processor and bring back in the KitchenAid. Now we're gonna get started rolling out the ravioli and actually filling them and getting into all that good stuff. 
So I also have this fancy little KitchenAid attachment here for my mixer that rolls out long sheets of pasta. And I honestly use it all the time. But if you don't make pasta all the time, it's no big deal. You can definitely just roll this out by hand with a hand, you know, rolling pin. So no big deal. So all you do, and you want to make sure that your pasta dough is pretty well floured. You just want to flatten it up. If, if it's not well floured, it'll kind of stick to this. So just take a little flour before it goes in and kind of rub it. And then you fold it in thirds, kind of like a letter. And you feed it back through that first setting one more time. And then sometimes, if I feel like it, or I don't know, I'll do it again just to kind of get it a really nice, flat dough. And actually, my, my dough still feels a little bit uh, wet, so I'm just gonna add a little bit more flour. And I'm gonna feed it through that first setting one more time. And then basically all you do here is we're making really, we're gonna make one really long like lasagna sheet basically. And each time you go through, you're gonna increase your number on the side here. And we're gonna make the pasta thinner each time it goes through. It's really simple, really easy. Um, and it doesn't take much time either. Like when I'm making homemade lasagna, I'll make homemade lasagna sheets and I'll just, it's almost easier than boiling lasagna, I swear. Now that we have our pasta sheets all rolled out and ready to go, it's time to actually stuff the raviolis. Flour your ravioli mold really, really well. And now we're just gonna grab the pasta and lay it down flat on the mold, making sure that it covers all of the, the entire surface of the mold basically. And then you kind of just lay the rest out. We're gonna fold that over in the end. And then you just grab your filling right here and you just scoop it right into the mold. So you just take this extra piece of pasta and you fold it right over the um, filling. And then I just like to press down, kind of get any of that air out and start to seal the ravioli themselves. You want to seal the filling into the raviolis. I use this little tool. You can use a rolling pin, you can just use your hands, and I just kind of go back and forth in between the raviolis. Okay, that looks pretty good. You see, you can sort of see the, you can sort of see the mold showing through and everything like that, and um, it looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna flip it upside down, and hopefully, assuming you really flour this mold, these are just gonna kind of pop right out. And yeah, beautiful, perfect. See, eee, it looks so cute. Okay, so you see how they're kind of like that. Unfortunately, um, it's kind of hard to keep them this cute little shape. I usually space them with my pizza cutter here and I just kind of cut the extra dough right off. And then once you're done making all the ravioli, it's time to kind of boil the water and start making that sauce. So. Okay, so turn a skillet on and let it get hot. Mine's actually already been preheating, so I'm just gonna add a drizzle of olive oil. And then all of my breadcrumbs go right into the skillet. What we're going to do now is we're going to add some fresh oregano. Okay, so 
our ravioli is completely finished and I'm so excited. It's time to eat, so let's plate this. It looks so good. Oh my gosh, all that butter and these fresh raviolis and that oregano and the prosciutto. It just smells so good. You guys are gonna love this meal. It's so perfect for fall. Let's get some of those fried oregano leaves. Maybe one more ravioli. The way I like to finish this off is with obviously our oregano sourdough breadcrumbs. I just sprinkle those on top. And then one of my favorite things right now is fresh figs. I just love adding them to everything and they're currently in season. So I've been adding them to almost everything I eat, literally. I just add a few fresh figs all around the pasta. Okay, you guys, so here's my butternut squash ravioli. It's all done. It's tossed in a brown butter oregano sauce. It's got sourdough breadcrumbs. It's just such a delicious fall recipe. I'm so excited about it. I really hope you guys love it. I'd love to stick around, but I gotta go take pictures of this before it gets all cold. So I really hope you enjoyed the recipe and thank you so much for watching.